Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the US, and I'm here to bring you a live paper crafting class. Um, well, it's live if you're watching live, and it is currently 11 a.m. Central Time in, on January 31st as I'm coming to you live. So if you're watching during that hour, 11 to noon or whatever, then you're on with me, yay, and we can chat. So log into your Google account or YouTube account if you're on that, and uh, you can chime in. Trisha will answer questions for you. She's my moderator. Just tag her by typing the, a, the at sign, the A with a circle around it, and then immediately start typing her name, T-R-I-C-I-A. Um, Trisha Josephs will come up. You just click on it, and you can ask her questions if you have any as we go, because I can't catch all the comments while I'm live. Um, it's really difficult for me. I think I have like a little ADHD going on. When I see a comment, then I get distracted and I forget what I'm doing. So, but I do catch a few from time to time. So thank you so much for joining me on Facebook. If you're watching there, we have Lisa Marshall. So hello to Lisa Marshall. Um, she is there to answer questions on that end. On that note, let's get started. I um, thought I had everything together. I had everything organized and then I quickly ran to my computer um, right before well, right after I click the live button because I forgot to grab my script. I always have this script with me, which you guys can't see right now. Um, but I'm going to tape it up so that I don't forget to say things. <laughs> so, um, the date. I covered that. January 31st, 2024, you guys. Wow. Um, and uh, we're going to be showing off a suite from the current mini catalog, the January through April mini catalog, which... Um, oops, hang on a minute. Sorry about that. <laughs> Clicking buttons that I shouldn't be. Thank you, Bonnie Blake, for chiming in. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you a suite from there because we have a holiday that's coming up in the U.S. I'm not sure if it's celebrated everywhere, but it's called Valentine's Day. And um, it's basically celebrating love. And so I thought I would feature one of our suites that, that kind of, you know, encompasses the theme of love. So let's move to the desktop and check this uh, catalog out. This is the mini catalog. You can also access these products by, and if I can click on the right one, if you go to, wrong one, here we go. If you go to my blog, my website at stampyourartout.com, you can click the word shop and you can see uh, the mini catalog products. So this is the mini catalog and within there's lots of fun stuff. Um, there's a couple different products in here that feature the love theme. I've um, shown some projects, lots of projects with this one, the Be Mine Suite. It's really fun. And then, of course, we have other products in here. This is a really cute stamp set, Sending Love. Um, but I'm going to move on to these pages here. So this is the Forever Love Suite. And when you see a suite in the catalog or a collection or whatever, it's basically products that Stampin' Up! has put together that all coordinate. So I'm gonna be featuring this suite. Look at the beautiful samples and the colors are really rich. We have Pretty Peacock and Moody Mauve as the main colors in here. You can also see a couple other samples on the next page over on page 16. So let's bring in those products so you can check them out. This is the stamp set. This is called Lifetime of Love, and all the dies now have the same name. So Lifetime of Love stamp set coordinates with the Lifetime of Love dies. Now you don't get your dies like this. The dies um, that I own are now on these magnetic sheets that I have from Stampin' Storage, and I store them in these little pockets like this. Uh, so if you're interested, there is a link in my favorite extras so you can access the stamp and storage products but it really shows off the the dies really well i think against the black and for storage i can see them all at once love them um so you can see that there's one two three four five images in here and there are one two three four five frame type dies that coordinate with those images we'll be using those because we want to die cut some pieces um now uh, well i'm getting ahead of myself these images can be stamped and die cut, but there's also some designer paper that we're going to cut from. So we're also going to use this die. It's a really thin frame type die. It's beautiful. It's really delicate though. In fact, let me just show you this one, which is its sister die. If I can peel it off of here. So you can see it's going to have that same, that same thin um, look to it. 
So we're gonna use the larger one. And I think that's it as far as dies go. So I'm gonna set this off to the side, but you can see there's other detailed dies in there. Okay, let's shove that over there. Um, sentiments, gorgeous script, right? Beautiful script. There's things for wedding, there's things for just love in general. Um, you could use this for anniversary, um, you can use it for appreciation type of stuff, like love you, right? So I'm gonna set that over there because I've got my stamps ready to go. Let's look at a couple other products that are in the suite. This one's unique, and I have dived into this one for sure, used a few of these cards already. Um, I'm gonna use another one today, so I might as well pull one out of there. But this pack comes with, I believe, 10 cards and envelopes. Um, yes, 10 cards and envelopes. And the envelopes are very delicate on the flap, so you'd want to enclose them in another envelope if you're mailing them. But for just handing them to a person in, you know, um, in person, then uh, they're just beautiful, right? And you can also cut the envelopes apart, which is what I like to do, and use them for card layers. And we do have vanilla envelopes, so you could substitute those in instead. But gorgeous foil-covered envelopes. Then we have this beautiful, pretty peacock and gold, um, and it is called the metallic ribbon. So it has a metallic sheen to it, and it, you can feel like the little metal threads in there, but the ribbon's super thin, so it's really easy to tie, but it does have that sense of sparkle. And then these are the gems, and you can see that they come in petal pink and pretty peacock. So that's another color that's in the suite is petal pink. Um, the petal pink and pretty peacock foil gems, they have little bits of like foily, uh, it's almost like that, um, I forget what it's called, but it's like that gold stuff that we have that you rub on to glue. I forgot the name of it. Anyways, little flecks of gold are within. So, really pretty sweet. Let's take a look at the paper. Gotta go a little faster here, Rachel. Okay, this is the paper. <laughs> the paper is pretty much pretty peacock and gold foiled on most of the sheets, except for when we get to the sixth one. So you get six different designs, double-sided, so there's actually 12 designs, and you get two of each. So you get 24 designs if you think of it that way, right? Okay, so you can see the gold foil designs here. Gorgeous, right? And here is the Moody Mauve one on the back. Then here are the flip sides. These, these are not foiled, but um, more subtle, softer designs. Uh, so this one I used on one of my cards, and then I used this on the other. So I did actually incorporate this into the cards today. And for the front of my cards, or the insides I should say, I used some accents from this, these two sheets. So you can fussy cut these out, you can die cut these out, there's a lot of dies that line up with the imagery that's in this sheet. So let's grab our machine. And we're gonna do some die cutting before I share with you the supply sheet, just because I wanna get this out of the way here. So I'm using uh, post-it tape. Uh, it's uh, 3M post-it. It's like sticky notes, only it's tape. And we'll be using that. I need to get a new plate. Mine is very scratchy. We'll be using this die and these dies along with our papers. Let's just take our vanilla one first and we're gonna line that up like this. I'm putting tape on here to hold it in place so it doesn't shift on me because I'm actually gonna flip this over. So let's grab a couple of these too. I've cut these out of the designer paper and we're just gonna line up the images with the dies, there's a cutting side. Oops, we got a little piece in there. There's a cutting side, and then there's the other side. There we go. You wanna have your dies clean, makes it easier to cut. Let's grab another piece of post-it tape, and we're just gonna stick that on there after we've lined up the imagery. Okay, grab that, and then let's just do one more for now. I actually have three of these, but I don't, I, I'm gonna cut again. I'm gonna cut this one again, so um, it's okay that we're doing the other one separately. So let's line up that image. Sometimes it takes a little bit of patience to get them to line up. 
Okay, so we've got the tape stuck down to the paper on all of these. I'm gonna shift these just a bit, put the other cutting plate on top. I've got it lined up so that we have the base plate, then the die adapter, then the two cutting mats are sandwiching our papers and dies. And we're just cranking on the handle. Hi, Sue. Oops, my paper underneath is moving. I'm gonna shift this. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take these pieces and these these two here, they have already cut out, so I'm just gonna slide them out of there. But I'm gonna do something extra with my more detailed die because I want it, oops, I want it to really cut all the way through. So I'm flipping it over now. I hope I didn't mess this up. Flipping it over and I'm gonna crank it through again. This time, the actual cutting part of the die is closer to the roller so it should give us a cleaner, deeper cut. Now I could have done that separately and just done, you know, had, had it go one time through, but it's sometimes good to roll it through twice also. So if you have a really detailed die, sometimes rolling it through twice or flipping it over is a good thing. So let's just peel the tape away and see what we've got. We're gonna keep this piece, don't throw that away. That's for another, uh, for something else that we need. Well, actually we need that piece for this card and this one, we're gonna use for another card. So take a peek at that. See how, how cut that is? It's really nice. So we're gonna grab all of this and pull it out of there. And then I'm gonna take and clean this off a bit because we wanna do it one more time. So our scratchier plate on the bottom, clean that up. Then we wanna clean this off and I've got a dye brush on my table underneath my mess. Oh, I know where it is, it's behind me. This is our die adapter brush and it can go on this end. Hang on, there we go. It can go on this end of our take your pick tool. I love this tool, it's interchangeable with all kinds of little ends that are so fun to use in crafting. Then we just brush this along here and it takes out all those tiny little pieces. And now it is, almost, and now it's clean, ready to go. All right, so we're gonna put this against our gold foil now. We have gold foil paper, and we'll stick this down. And then we will grab this die, and this die is gonna go with our last piece of paper. Grab all the little bits and pieces off there. You don't want them making any indentations. And we're gonna line that up. A big welcome to you if you are new to watching. Um, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I go live every week on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Central Time, pretty much every week. There's only a few times where I'm not live because life gets in the way. Okay, let's crank this through. And let's pull it out, beautiful. Okay, I am going to crank that through another time. And I'm gonna flip it over because it didn't, it didn't cut all the way through, you guys. So we're gonna lay this down, grab these two, flip it, Bring it back through the machine. There's also things called precision plates. Stampin' Up! used to carry those. So there's all kinds of little tricks to making your um, detailed dies cut better. But this is just one of them and it's pretty affordable because all you have to do is just flip it over. Okay, so we're gonna save that piece too. Let's take off all of our tape. And I just stick my extra tape here because you can use your tape more than once. Um, these are getting ratty, but <laughs> I might have to throw them away. But the ones that I just grabbed that are newer, we can keep those. So we'll stick those down here and we'll clean up the mess. Rachel's got a mess. Okay, let's move that out of the way. So I told you to hang on to all your pieces from this because Two of them are gonna be used on 
another card that I'm going to show you at the end. So these are cards that we made at the Silver Elite Retreat. It's a um, it's an event that I host annually for my demonstrators who are leaders in my group. Um, and, you know, we could talk leader stuff, but we really just basically have fun the whole weekend and we craft. So um, we just had that and it was uh, two weekends ago, well, a week and a half ago. These were cards that we made there and I kind of came up with the fold by playing around with some paper a while back. And then I thought, you know what? I gotta show this fold to everybody because it's so easy. And it's actually um, a fold that um, I'm sure other people have done out there, but I, I'm happy to say that my mind came up with it <laughs> without seeing anybody else's ideas. Um, sometimes that happens, but then, you know, you see other people out there that are doing it too. So anyways, so maybe it's been done before, but it's really cool. It's called an outside in fold. And we're going to use this paper, which is the Pretty Peacock color, and an extra little panel. So now let's take a peek at the actual um, PDF. And this PDF does not have written directions on it, by the way. Oh, you know what? I have to pull that in, you guys. Sorry about that. Hopefully it'll connect. Please connect. Oh, you know what? I gotta do this. I forgot to connect my computer, you guys. Oh, here it is. Okay. so. We have this PDF that doesn't have written directions, but it has the measurements. It has images of the cards we're gonna do. It has supplies, and most of them are clickable. It has the date and it has the title. So when this blog post that's connected to this video goes live later on today, you'll be able to access this PDF. You can take a screenshot if you'd like to, but again, it's gonna be accessible to you to just download, keep on your computer, or print off or whatever, you can see the images of the cards. And do you see how, like, let's just take a look at the pre peacock one, the forever and always. You see that when the card is closed, but you also see it when the card is open, because we're going to make a little rotating piece. So that piece is going to kind of shift um, from the front to the inside or the outside to the in. Okay. All right. So now let's go back to the desktop. Is everybody still with me? I hope so. I've just been chatting. Okay, let's start, start cutting. Um, press that over to the side and grab our trimmer. So for our measurements, we are going to use just a half a sheet of cardstock. And this is a half a sheet in the long direction, right? Um, so it's four and a quarter by 11 inches. We're gonna score it halfway at the five and a half inch mark. Oh, this is my new trimmer. My new trimmer has a really nice deep scoring blade, so I wanna make sure I don't press too hard. And then we're gonna score again. We're gonna extend the arm of our trimmer and we're gonna score even further at the eight and three quarter inch mark. Does it seem dark in here, you guys? For some reason it seems dark. Maybe I have to pull this lamp closer. Does that help? <laughs> okay, eight and three quarters is the next score line. And then we have another piece that already measures, because we cut it ahead of time, three by four and a half inches. Before we move this cardstock on our trimmer, we're gonna cut and we're gonna go five eighths of an inch in. This is a wonderful ruler that Kayla Corey introduced to me, um, Kayla and Nancy introduced to me while we were on the Silver Elite Retreat. It's called a Victor ruler. And I have a link for it in my favorite extras on my blog, so if you're interested in it. but. Take a peek at this, you guys. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see better. One eighth, one fourth, three eighths, one half, five eighths, three fourths. Look at, the actual measurements are written on here. So if you struggle with math and measuring, this is a great ruler. It even has the sixteenths, one sixteenth, three sixteenths, five sixteenths, yay! Okay, so we are going to go five eighths. So this is five eighths. We're gonna go that far in from each end of our card. So we're gonna take our blade and we're gonna cut 5 eighths inches in and cut another 5 eighths inches in. On this card, and I'll just move the um, scoring blade out of the way, on this card it's going to go to the 3 and 5 eighths inch mark on this side and when we lift it up and bring it this way you're just coming down 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, now that we've cut we're gonna rotate and we're gonna bring it into our trimmer 5 eighths of an inch in. Okay, again, you could take that ruler and go, where's 5 eighths? 
Ah, uh, it's right there. I love this ruler, you guys. Okay, so we're gonna go five eighths of an inch in, and we're gonna start at that cut on this score line, and we're gonna push out and away. Okay, so we're removing a rectangle. I'm gonna have to trim that out. Let's flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Start at that score line and cut out and away. So we're removing the outside little rectangles here. Now we have a score line that's right at this spot here. And if you look at that, it's kind of like a little flap, right? Here's the fold of our card. Let's move this and take this piece now and we're gonna attach it. So this piece <clears throat> measures three inches tall and it fits right with the piece that we, we have underneath. The little We'll call this the hinge piece. So we're just gonna add adhesive to the hinge piece because we only want it attaching there. Oops, and I went beyond. Grab my little adhesive eraser, which is also in a list of my favorite things if you're interested. Okay, so now we're gonna go like this. We're gonna attach this piece to this, the, to the hinge, so that everything's lined up. And it looks like that. Okay, so this is how it works. Outside, in. Oops, we gotta get that score line going. Let's grab the bone folder. Outside, in. Easy peasy, right? Okay, now, what panels are we gonna do? We're gonna do this little fun decorative paper on here. So let's grab our trimmer. Decorative paper. It's a card, Rachel. I know, but I'm using it as paper. So we're gonna cut four inches off this side, and we're gonna cut four inches off this side. This piece you could save for whatever, or throw it away. Okay, we have these two pieces, and I think they're like that. Okay, now we're gonna cut three inches from the bottom of each. Because the flowers are going this way, this is up, so this is the bottom. Let's cut three inches from there, save that piece, and then cut three inches from the bottom of this one, and save that piece. Okay, make sure that these are facing upward. Each of those are facing upward. We'll bring our trimmer out of the way. We'll grab our blending brush. And now we're gonna just do some little art on our glass mat. We're using our Pool Party ink which is a nice light, 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 light version of Pretty Peacock, in my mind. They go together really well. So we're gonna ink up our blending brush just by swirling it around on our pad. And it's good to put a little pressure on top. I like to hold it on the sides. I feel like the handle is more stable that way. So we're swirling to get the ink on there. And we're just gonna put the ink right towards the top. When you do it on the glass mat, you have extra ink that you can't see really well, I can, but you can't see it too well on the camera. But there's extra ink here that you can continue to use because it's not soaking into like the grid paper or whatever, right? So you can keep on pulling in that ink from the glass mat. It's gonna just keep on pushing over there, right? No wasted ink. And we're just continuing to do um, the swirling motion because we want it to look like a gradual dark to light. So I'm getting the edge really dark and we're just kind of getting that color to go from blue to vanilla. Let's do the other piece that same way. Now if you want to use both sides of your paper this might not be the best thing to do because sometimes well it's not working with this color because it's so light but you could pick up extra color underneath. So then you'd want to go to a grid paper so that it doesn't get underneath your your project, but we're just gonna tape that backside down so it doesn't matter. All right, so with a light ink, you really have to go at it a few times to get it to deepen in color. And I love the results we have here. So we now have this, I don't know, is it ombre or gradient? I always get those two mixed up. But it's basically a dark to light. Oops, I wanna get the edge a little bit darker here. because we're gonna connect one of these pieces with Pool Party cardstock. So it looks like this color is kind of washing into the vanilla. Clever, right? 
Okay, <laughs> so let's grab these and set them over here for a minute. Pull this in. And I think I want, on the inside of this one, I want to do the, um, the back side of the card, which is this one, because I think those flowers just, I don't know, they're big and beautiful, and I just want them on the inside. So we're gonna use our seal adhesive, or you could use multi-purpose liquid glue. <clears throat> hey, Christy, glad you showed up. Um, so just set that right in this space, and this space is perfect with an eighth of an inch edge all the way around on the Pretty Peacock layers. Okay, so we have that positioned in here. This one is gonna go here, but we're gonna stamp it, so we're not gonna add it yet. And this one is gonna go on the front of the card. So on the front side, we have this panel. And for this one, we want the blue going to the left because we want that color to show through. And it was over, if it's over on the right, it's gonna get covered up too much when we close this front flap. Now we'll add our gold layer. So the gold layer is very, very thin, and I could have, but it's not something I'm in the habit of, plus I like this idea better. I could have used um, the uh, adhesive sheets and put them across the back side of my gold paper before die cutting and made this into a sticker. But I like this old fashioned way. So I use my silicone sheet and I put a bit of Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue on there. And then I grab a sponge. And you can find sponges in my favorite things also. The reason why I keep talking about my favorite things page on my blog is because um, I just found out that there were a lot of images that were missing recently. Nobody alerted it to me and I was like, oh my gosh, how long have they been gone? So I decided to update it and I wanted to let you guys know that it's been updated and everything's in there. Okay, so I'm gonna position this on the, the, the left half of my silicone sheet so that I have the right side to work with later on. And I'm just pouncing up and down, getting some of that um, Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue on the back side. I'm holding this still so that the glue doesn't get on the front and I'm just pouncing on top. And we'll just shift our hand over and we'll get the other side here. We'll lift it up move this off to the side, and we're gonna add this to this area of our card. And we wanna get it on there as much as possible, nice and centered. Okay, so like I said, we had made this card at the Silver Elite Retreat, and actually two versions of it, plus two other cards that went along with pieces that were cut out from, you know, that we thought we were gonna throw away. So there's actually four cards I'm gonna share with you. But because we made these at the Silver Elite Retreat, we had other people there that are very creative. And in the blog post that you're gonna see, you're gonna see um, some other variations of this card. Let's take and stamp off and put this back in here because we're gonna do some stamping onto, well actually, you know what? Let's just do it right on here because these are rubber stamps. I'm gonna use this stamp right now um, and this one. We're gonna stamp the inside of the vanilla with our Pretty Peacock ink. So this is the dark color that coordinates with the cardstock. And I'm gonna test this on my grid of my glass mat, just see how it stamps here. Um, I think I have it straight. Of course, I'm looking at it from an angle. Oh, it looks straight in the camera. And good, okay, so I can trust the way I mounted my label on my paper. So I'm just gonna, I'm going to, um, connect this flat edge up here with my grid paper, and then eyeball this to pray that it's straight on here, and we'll stamp it down. Ta-da! <laughs> Yay, it works. Okay, now we're gonna do some flowers, and the flowers are just gonna come in from the sides. So we'll have one there, and we'll have one here. And gosh, we could do more along the edges, but look at our messy glass mat. Plus we had that pool party ink on there. Glass mat comes with this chamois and you just clean it up. Now it's all clean. Yay. <laughs> all right, so there is our forever and always sentiment. This can get glued to the front. So put that right in here and it's gonna fit right in there because remember it was um, the portion that came out of this piece. 
which is the same as that. So we'll be using these two together on another card and these two got used together on this card. This looks a little empty here and that's where we're gonna bring in our die cut pieces from the designer paper. But again, you could have stamped them and die cut them because those dies coordinate with the stamps in the suite. Okay, are we ready? So let's go ahead and take and add. I'm gonna add the flowers first. We're gonna kind of position them where we think they're gonna look best. Grab my dimensionals. Stick one on the back side so it's fairly close to this, um, the base of the flower because what if my flower comes off the edge a little bit? So we're gonna stick that one and I'm, I'm looking at my other one that's finished because I'm cheating. We're gonna stick that one down here. And then this one is also going to be positioned with it coming off the edge just slightly also, right? So we don't want any stickies on the back side. So we're gonna put our dimensional close to the base of that flower. Pull the backing off, and that one's going to get lined up right like that. All right, on the inside, we have some stamping to do. So we're gonna grab our pool party card layer. This is the layer that goes on the inside of the card, and we're going to stamp our sentiment, love you. We can test that on our grid paper to make sure it's straight, make sure Rachel mounted it straight. That looks pretty darn good. And because this covers most of the inside, we pretty much have free reign for that whole layer, except for this corner and this corner. If we stamp there, it's gonna be seen when the card is closed. I'm gonna stamp this off to the left, just slightly and in the middle. And then I've got this stamp image that coordinates with the image that I just cut. And because this comes all the way to the right edge, I know that I can go all the way to the right edge over here and I'm gonna cheat and look over at my finish line. Hang on a minute. Okay, so this one is gonna go like that and this one is gonna go like that. And this piece will then just get added with a little multi-purpose liquid glue or the seal adhesive, whatever you wish to use. There we go. And we'll stick that down so it's coming off the card and kind of pointing to the word, to the words I love, or to the words love you. Now we have a little bit of the end coming off there. We'll snip it. If there is an image on that designer paper and it doesn't have a die, you can fussy cut it, which is what I'm going to show you on the other card. We did fussy cut for the other card. Again, seal on the back or multi-purpose liquid glue. Let's bring in the beautiful gems. Remember the petal pink and pretty peacock gems. Take a peek at this, watch. Covers it up. Really cool, right? So let's grab those gems, and they are in this mess over here that you guys don't see. It's very messy. <laughs> I'm usually not messy, you guys. This is hard for me. Most crafters are though, right? Raise your hand if you're a messy crafter. <laughs> okay, so let's take and add some gems. I'm gonna add one, two, three in the dark areas. And then I'm gonna add an extra one because I felt like the sentiment on here was a little, um, it was a little sparse. Like it needed one more thing. So I'm gonna add a couple up here and then I'm gonna add another one in this space. I think I added it right about there. So usually odd numbers works best, but we have three here and we have one there. It's odd right? And there's the finished card. So it opens outside in. Fun! Okay, let me show you the other version that I did here. Close up my ink pad so I don't mess up anything. And I'm moving some stuff off to the side here, you guys, because we, we definitely don't want to um, get anything mixed up. Okay, so for my other card, my second version of the card, I use the Moody Mauve color. I'm bringing these stamps over here too because we don't want to get ink on anything. Okay, for the second card, I used Moody Mauve. I also used the gold foil sheets and the very vanilla sheets. Moody Mauve is the base of the cardstock plus the panel. And the inside is petal pink 
because I used the designer paper, petal pink designer paper, for this piece and this piece. And you could, let's say you're doing a class with this card, you could get six of these from one sheet of 12 by 12 designer paper, six cards, because each of these together are four by six, and then it's just cut in half at three inches, all right? So any of you that are demonstrators out there, if you're doing an outside-in card with these measurements, a sixth of a piece of designer paper will help to cover those little panels. So now we have the inside of that, the outside. Okay, let me bring in the finished card and show you what I did with that one. So that one looks like this. So it's the same idea. I used um, another stamp from the set to stamp a flower up there. I fussy cut these flowers from the designer paper because it didn't have matching dies for those. Petal pink for the gems. Same thing, gold outline, vanilla inside. And then no blending brush, no extra inking or ombre, but you could do that if you wanted to. And then I made this into a wedding card, congratulations on your wedding day, and stuck one more flower plus the stamp that I used here on the inside. And they get covered up when the card is closed. Now on, um, I think it was Nancy's card that I'm sharing on the blog post, she loved the idea of having some uh, little flowers that were peeking out on her cards when they were closed. So you'll see, that she did that on her. She had some little hints of flowers up here, and V Trans, she did little extra bursts of um, floral right here, so that when the card was open like that, you could see the fun little floral imagery there. So, lots of fun variations on that. Now, remember when we did the die cutting for that, we had these pieces left over, and you would have this times two, because if you're doing both of these cards, you would then have two sets of this. And because we had these pieces, this was the top of those little note cards, we have these also. I thought, well, let's design another card. So for that card, let's bring in, and these are gonna be shared on my blog, I think tomorrow, um, measurements and supplies. I only have the measure measurements and supplies for these today, but I wanna show you some tips and tricks for making the second set of cards, and they're both the same. So for this one, you're gonna take, and I have to grab it, a large circle punch, which is the two and three eighths inch circle punch, and I've just unlocked it from the bottom here to open it up. We're gonna stamp on here, gotta grab the stamp, with, and you know what, I think, I think I like the idea of using the forever and always again on this one, because, that's what the gals use. Most of the gals use this at the Silver Elite Retreat, and I really thought it was pretty. So I'm gonna clean off my stamp here, the Forever and Always. Actually, I'm using it in the same color. We, can, we don't have to clean it off. <laughs> All right, so let's grab our Pretty Peacock ink and stamp that onto our scrap of Very Vanilla forever and always, and I'm stamping it off to the right-hand side so that I have a little handle to hold on to when I'm punching out my sentiment. And then I'm gonna keep this flipped over and we're gonna add to the back side some adhesive all the way across. And then I've punched out another punch that is the same size, two and three-eighths inches. And we're going to attach just a shadow, because I cut it in half. We're attaching a shadow on this side, and we're attaching a shadow on this side. So I cut it in half and got a little, um, and just widened it up a bit there so that you see like a little hair. I'll put it down here so you can see better. So it's just a little, it looks like there's a wider shadow or a circle underneath it, right? A little oval. And then um, the next thing that I did is I had my card base and it is cut to four and a quarter by nine inches. And it's scored at five and a half inches so that we have a little bit peeking out down here and that's for this. So this is where you add this piece and I wanna make sure I do this right. Oh wait, there's one more thing. 
I want to have this little accent of pretty peacock on the inside. So what I did for that one is I put adhesive right up towards the top of that designer paper. So it's up here and I laid it on my grid paper and just added it so there was a little hint of pretty peacock showing through like that. And then I took the whole thing and added it to the inside of my card with an eighth of an inch on the bottom and on the sides for a border. So you see that here. The pretty peacock metallic, gold metallic ribbon then I tied, oh wait, I did something else first. Then I added this piece like this. In fact, I think I added the gold first because the gold has a definite left and right edge. This one's a little bit harder to tell because we've got the floral over here. So I think I added this one next. And yes, and then I made sure that my florals would not go too far beyond, yes. So I'm going to add it so that this little corner here is kind of in line with this edge. So we want to make sure that we have no adhesive going below that little part that's jutting out. We'll lay this down. We've got people out driving today in their loud cars because it's a beautiful day outside. We'll add that here. We're having like spring weather, it's crazy. And now I can use the other side of my silicone mat with my glue. So let's flip that over. Add this here and we only want to put adhesive on the top portion so I don't want to go beyond these little leaves here in fact I probably want to even omit those leaves so I'm not going to ink them up with any adhesive I'm just going to go down to the ones right above and add my adhesive going around the side here a bit move this off to the side We'll add this, and it's very delicate. It's hard to see because it's vanilla against vanilla, but it's striking. And um, vanilla against vanilla or white against white, it's just one of those things I think you should try if you haven't tried it yet. It gives for a very elegant look on cards. So now we have that texture on there. And then the ribbon goes on. And we just tie that in a knot. I'm using my ring finger to hold down the ribbon, and then I'm grabbing the top piece, bringing it over from the left side um, across the one that's on the bottom that I've moved. Okay, let's just go slowly through this, okay? So I'm doing right over left, right over left, bend that in half, bring this one down, bend this one in half, and bring it up. Use my ring finger, hold it down, take the uh, top one, which is now gonna be my left side. I'm gonna move it off to the left. Left over right, okay? And then I'm gonna bend that one in half, pull it through, but this one I'm gonna keep straight. And as I tighten it, I'm just gonna look at that center circle and make sure that it doesn't get too tight or too bubbled. And there we have the knot. Grab our snips and trim off the excess. We're going to shift this over because nothing's glued down yet. And then this piece just gets added here. So we're going to do that with dimensionals. And because I want a little adhesive, since this ribbon is so close to the edge, I want a little adhesive here. I'm going to place my dimensionals right on top. Here. And here. And here. And that will help to hold this in place. I'm also going to put one on the top and on the bottom back side of my circle. Pull off the backings or the release paper on the back side. And we'll slip this underneath that ribbon knot over here and kind of center it. Make sure that our words are going parallel to the top and bottom edges of the card. We'll tack that down. And then I just finished it off with some extra embellishments that um, I had that were sequins. And so you'll want to check out the photos for these finished cards in tomorrow's blog post. And that's what I did with that. I just like the cleaner look of that. I kind of recommend that. But yeah. And then you can stamp something on the inside if you want to. 
It's a very pretty, fun card, something to do with those extra pieces. So check out the blog post tomorrow too for a couple other ideas using those supplies. Let's bring them all in now. Move this off. Bring in those cards. We'll, fin we'll bring in this finished card too so you can see the insides. So that is the outside in car, you guys. I hope that you had fun with that. We have um, some announcements and some prizes to do before we sign off. Uh, thank you so much for watching, by the way. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, subscribe to my blog too. You can see posts of times where I don't just do videos too. All right, so let's talk about uh, promotions going on. If you're interested in any of this product from now through the end of February 2024, if you place a $50 order in the US, you can choose a level one celebration freebie. Um, it's a promotion that started January 4th. This is the publication, but you can also find that information when you go to my website and you shop. So you can click in that, uh, on the website to check out all of these fun goodies. So if it says free with 50, free with 50, it's something that you can pick out for free to add to your order um, with a $50 order. We also have level two or free with a $100 order type thing. So check out all of your options if you're interested in purchasing. If you are a demonstrator, order from yourself. If, you're, um, if you already have a demonstrator, order from them, give them some love. Um, but if you're new to stamping or you have not found a demonstrator yet, I would welcome you shopping with me. All right, so let's take a peek at some prizes. Um, prizes, prizes, prizes. I'm gonna put them on my glass mat. The glass mat is also something that you can get in on during celebration if you're not a demonstrator already. We got to pre-order this beauty um, and hopefully more of these will be made available afterwards for demonstrators who didn't get in on it. But um, right now, it's currently only for new people who sign up uh, to be a demonstrator or a discount shopper and get it the starter kit. Let's bring in prizes, you guys. <clears throat> so if you're liking the glass mat, that's how you get it. We had prizes from last week. Two packs of uh, basic white cardstock, and I believe it's five by seven, and then a choice of a couple inks. That was the prizes from last week, and I have winners that we have chosen for that. So I'm gonna move some things on my computer that you don't see me doing, and I'm going to grab those names from YouTube. Oops, let's click there, click there. Okay, from YouTube, we had uh, Colleen Rost, uh, Rost, yes. This is our YouTube winner, Colleen Rost, R-O-S-T-E, and then you have the 1255 on the end there. You're an after live winner, you commented after the live was done, so you got in on the prize drawing and you won. So reach out to me at my email address that you see there, stampyourart.comcast.net, if that is your name, and um, we can get your prize mailed off to you. If you live outside the US, we always have tutorials as an option. Um, and that's, that's an option for anybody. So if you'd rather get a tutorial, you can choose that instead. From Facebook commenters, we had Dana Davis. So congratulations to Dana Davis. You also get to have two packs of those basic white cardstock um, little Merci packs and two ink spots. So reach out to me. I do have some past winners that uh, have not claimed their prizes. So I'm gonna pull up a sheet really quick and read off some names. If this is your name, then um, let me know <clears throat> by emailing me. I've got my email still sitting up there. So um, we had people from that were drawn last week. We have Tammy, oh, sorry, Tammy Shoes, S H O O Z. We had Karen Moffat with two A's in her name, and then M O F F A T. We have Lisa Hartman. We have Rebecca Chapman. Those were names that were called out last week and they haven't claimed their prizes yet, so reach out to me if that's one of your names. Um, and then from the week before, we had Tina Marie Buckman, we had uh, Alexina Walsh, uh, and we had Janine, and I think it's Knippel, K-N-I-P-P-L-E-L. And then I'm gonna just call out this one last set of winners from the week before that, Roxanne Emerson and Carol Lindley. All of you haven't claimed your prizes yet, you guys. Okay, what are we doing for prizes today? So let's bring those in. Prizes today, Rachel, did we come up with them? We did not. What happened? 
Oh my gosh, Rachel. Okay, I guess I didn't come up with prizes today. <laughs> so we're just gonna say it's a tutorial of your choice. Um, and they can range from $15, well some of them are $12 value, all the way up to like a $29 value. So um, I'm gonna show you where they're at on my website. Okay, we'll go there so you can see them. You can see your choices. Let's go back to my computer. All right, so on my website, if you won, if, if Trisha called your name, um, you're going to go under Shop, Tutorials, Tutorials. You're going to click here and you can see that there are lots of choices, many, many pages of choices. So um, check those out and let me know what prize you'd like. And now I'm going to take a peek to see what Trisha has done because I'm sure she's called out the winners already. So I'm going to go ahead and peek to see. Yes, she has many times. Okay, let's see if I can grab that comment. There it is. Yay! So today's winners are Vicki Eakins and Anna uh, Machicoti. Did I say it right? Um, Vicki Eakins and Anna Machicoti. Machicote? I don't know. I hope I'm saying it right. But uh, congratulations to all the winners. Reach out to me at my email address at stampyourartout.com. Aw, thanks, Candice, for the sweet message. <laughs> and let's see what else do I want to tell you before we go um, new kits if you're a kit lover like I am there are new kits that are debuting tomorrow so you'll want to go to the Stampin' Up! website and check them out so excited um that's it yeah Dana all right I see your name she goes oh my goodness I'm so excited <laughs> so make sure you reach out to me my email address though because like in comments the comments get lost, so you have to reach out to me via email. That's the best way. Thank you, Lisa, for that reminder. Lisa Marshall on Facebook is also reminding about the email address. Next week, I'm going to go live, and I do have a really fun home decor project to share with you. It's also, I believe, yes, it is the blog hop week, so I'll be featuring the lovely lavender, oh no, perennial lavender, that's what it's called, the perennial lavender suite. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous suite in the catalog, beautiful purple hues. It's, it's fantastic. So uh, my plan is to do a home decor project with it. And then you can also get in on our exclusive videos that our all-star group does. You can learn more about that next week. So next week, February 7th at 11 a.m. Central Time, I will be live along with my friends, Trisha and Lisa. Thank you so much, Trisha and Lisa. Thank you to all of you who showed up today. Thank you to all of you who are new. And thank you to those of you who have been coming week after week to my lives. I hope that you continue to do so. Thanks for your um, comments that you send me. And I'm having fun. I love this job. So if you could, please give me the thumbs up. Subscribe to my um, YouTube channel. Subscribe to my blog. Uh, click like on my Facebook page. All those good things so that I can continue to share what I love with all of you. For now, I want you all to have a great crafty week, and uh, now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.